OMDS has done it. They just launched a new macro lens. It is likely the most innovative and the best macro lens ever made. Pretty bold claim. Hi, it's Peter here. And a disclaimer. I have to say a disclaimer before we take a closer look at the lens. The lens I tested was not mine. I had one week with it before the launch of, a, of it, uh, but I had it a couple of weeks ago. This lens has been sent back to OMDS. Like always, OMDS need not tell me what to say, nor had they seen this video before. Everything I say is my own opinion after testing the lens for a week. Now that the legal stuff is out of the way, let's dive into the macro world. This lens has some exciting features. We will get into those after some boring stuff about the specs. Specifications. The weight is only 453 grams, the length is 136 millimeters, and the diameter is roughly 70 millimeters. The filter thread is 62, the same as many other Mzuiko Pro lenses. That is a good thing. You can use the same filters with this and the Pro Primes. More specs about the lens when I talk about the exciting features. It is much bigger than the Mzuiko 60mm f2.8 Pro and still smaller than other brands. Of course, it has IP53 weather sealing, which seems to become a OM system standard. Okay, what's in the box? The box has the new environmentally sustainable OMDS style. Inside the box are the lens, of course, the lens hood, and a pouch. Look and feel. This lens looks like an Mzuiko Pro lens. The design is very similar to other Pro lenses. It feels terrific in my hand and goes well with OM1. It has a few buttons on the side. I will talk about those next. Usability. The first button is the focus limiter. There are three settings, S macro 0.5 to 0.5 and then from 0.25 to infinity. The other one is the stabilizer. Yes, the lens has a stabilizer and it is Sync IS compatible. Together with the IBIS, it can stabilize seven stops. That is a great feature and makes handheld macro more easy to do. And the LFN button can be customized like any other LFN button. It's a good addition to this lens. Another awesome thing is that it has MF clutch. It shows not only a distance scale, but also shows the magnification. I especially like the MF clutch in a macro lens. It makes switching from AF to MF and back really fast. With this lens, MF might not be necessary since AF works without limits. And what about the magnification? The native magnification is two times. If that is not enough, you can use extenders. Yes, the lens is compatible with MC14 and MC20. With MC20, the magnification will be four times. The images look fantastic. We see a world we have not seen before. Here you can see how the magnification looks. I used a standard small match. The diameter of the tip is roughly two and a half millimeters. This one is two times and this is 1.5 times and this one is one times. The same with MC20, two times, three times and four times. The match is too big for four times magnification. This example is from the two euro coin. The one on the right is with two, two time magnification and the left one is with four times magnification. Focus bracketing and focus stacking. Focus bracketing is needed. The closest focusing distance is very close. Depth of field is minimum as you see from this footage. That is a millimeter and when we look closer only the edge of the marking is sharp. And this is with f5. This is the same with f10. For this image I used 23 images to make the whole tip of the match sharp. The aperture was f8. I used two time magnification. This image is made with 60mm 2.8 macro. I used the same aperture f8 but needed only three images. And I used Luminar Neo for stacking. Before we talk about the image quality, I need to think if there are any downsides on this lens. The only thing I can think of is that the lens is quite slow. f3.5 is not bad for a macro lens, but if you use the S macro mode, it becomes a f5.0 lens. 
I do not think it's a significant issue since we're most likely need to stop down for the depth of field anyways. When using f5.0, we need a lot of light to go faster shutter speed. If the subject is not moving and you have a tripod, that is not an issue. For handheld macro, it might be even though there is a 7-stop stabilizing. Image quality. Image quality is excellent all, all the way up till f16, where diffraction affects the image quality. It is tough to test the corner sharpness because the depth of field is so narrow. We're talking about fractions of a millimeters. The only way is to use focus bracketing and then stack the images, of course. I had little time to go out and make some macro images. The only time I could go out, I used a flash. It was pretty dark outside, and without a flash, there was no way I could have shutter speed speeding, uh, speeding up fast enough. I used the Olympus FL700VR and triggered it with FCVR. The light is quite harsh, and I used a reasonably big diffuser to make the light a bit softer and to look more pleasing. And the price. The price is fourteen ninety nine slash slash euro slash dollars. So it's not a cheapest option, but it is an excellent value for money if you are looking for a macro lens. And then I talked about the DASM accessories. I already mentioned the extenders. This pleasant surprise was not revealed when the development announcement was made last September, and I think it was a wise thing to do and to make it uh, compatible with the extenders. Since you might need a lot of light, having a radio controlled flash might be handy. Also, the Ringfast STF8 works very well with the lens. I tested the lens with FL700 wirelessly. In many cases, it is necessary to use flash. Having a diffuser in front of the flash is another accessory you need. Compared to other macro lenses for OM system, OM system now has three macro lenses, the 30mm, the 60mm, and now the 90mm. The 30mm is an excellent lens to start, to start with, if you only need a macro lens every now and then. If you're more serious about macro, 60 or 90 millimeters is your choice. I will have video comparing this to the 60 millimeter lens in the future. I think it do it in a couple of weeks. What about other usages? Do you need this lens if you don't shoot any macro? Why not use it for portraits, product shots, and all around telephoto lens? I'm not in the market for a macro lens, but I could see myself using this for product shots. It is very sharp and has an excellent focal length for product photography. Before I talk a little bit more about the claim that I said that it's probably the best macro lens ever made, a few words about why I think this lens is really important if we think about OMDS. OMDS has made a strategy that it's all about outdoors, wildlife, bird photography, and all that type of stuff. And macro lens is a must in that genre or that target group that they are targeting. And I think it's a wise thing to do and make a really high quality a lot of uh, uh, innovations in that lens, and I think that's that's a really wise move. And it's why I want to say this is that I think this is a good example of how uh, seriously OMDS is taking the whole thing. A lot of people are saying that you know Micro Fords and Olympus is dying, and I still don't understand that people are saying that Olympus has died. No, it hasn't. It had just been sold to another company that makes new and great gear, and I think this 90 millimeter fits that story perfectly and why I think this lens is the best macro lens ever made. Of course it's a bold claim because I haven't tested all the macro lenses in the world but if you look at what it has the extenders are compatible with that lens which makes it a lot more versatile. It's it's marvelous and then there is one secret thing that I cannot say but if you look at the 40 to 150 millimeter I think what it has you might want to test something but Unfortunately, I cannot say that out loud what it is, but you might figure it out. But you do that with your own risk, because there are some things that might affect that. But this is all I can say about that, but you'll figure it out. And then it is four times macro, but with the MC20, two times without. And as you saw from the examples that I had, you can get really, really close. And with the MC20, you might even get too close or get a too big of a magnification. You don't get too close. You still have some room for lights. It, it's not that close. But as I said, a good move from OMDS and I'm very happy about the lens. Will I get the lens? Most likely not. And the reason is not because 
it's a bad lens or anything. It's a great lens, but I don't need one. I do have the 60 millimeter and a 30 millimeter for my occasional need for macro photography. I'm totally happy with that. But like I said, I could use it for product photography. Are you planning on getting this lens? How do you, how do you see? Is that a good move from OMDS to have a lens like this, a 90 millimeter macro lens? But if you're interested in more about macro lenses, check out this video. There is a lot more stuff about macro photography. But hey, thanks for watching and bye for now.